Should you use a car or a truck when starting and operating your pet waste removal business? I'm EJ McCoy, co-founder and CEO of Scoop Soldiers. Here's my advice. So in a lot of cases, this is a question of necessity. Some new business owners are only going to have a vehicle, a, a car as their vehicle. They don't have a choice. And this business can absolutely be operated. I've seen businesses all over the country operate their business using the most fuel efficient car. I also personally have never used a car and we've always geared our, our business towards trucks because there are some pitfalls to, to using a highly fuel efficient and less expensive vehicle. For example, when you're using a car, how do you come to a extremely neglected yard that has a ton of poop. We've literally had jobs where we pulled hundreds of pounds of dog waste out of the backyard. And of course, we, we at Scoop Soldiers historically have used Nissan Frontiers, Toyota Tacomas, Chevrolet Colorados our franchisees use, and more recently Ford Mavericks. But I'll get into that a little bit later. One piece on using a vehicle that, that's the biggest pitfall in my mind is when you get to a new customer and the, the waste is so extensive, it's been so neglected that you can't fit it all in their dumpster. I'm not sure how a car operates or how you operate working a car and solve that problem for your client, but I do know that it's being done all, all across this industry. And so let's dive in a little bit further. Car or truck? A, v, a car is gonna be more fuel efficient. It's gonna be far less expensive to both buy maintain and operate. Historically, trucks are more expensive on all of those fronts, drive, buying them, operating them, maintaining them. But you do have the ability to provide a much more uh, full service pet waste offering when you've got a truck because you can haul the waste away. Uh, I've also seen setups in this industry where people take a really in, inexpensive fuel efficient vehicle or car and they put a little rack on the back of it where they can haul waste away using that rack. Uh, that can work. You could put a little trash can or a cooler type or a bin set up and you put all the waste uh, on the rack in this bin using like bungee cords and tie downs. I've seen that. And that can work, especially when you're bootstrapping your business, maybe you're starting it as a side hustle. But again, you're gonna run into some problems when you get to that highly neglected first time scoop that's gonna take you maybe even a few hours and you're gonna rake out literally two, three, 500 pounds of pet waste. What do you do at that point? Maybe you have to make multiple trips that gets really inefficient really fast. And so there are some pitfalls to using a much less expensive car versus a slightly more expensive truck. But if that's all you have, by all means, go for it, but do it. What vehicles do you find to be the most efficient in your pet waste removal business? Do you use cars? Do you use trucks? Are you still working and testing the two? Comment below, I wanna hear from you. If you're looking at your business and you're looking at scaling your business from one vehicle to two vehicles to someday five vehicles or 10 vehicles, this is where using a car can also come in handy. There's a lot more efficiency in buying a car for $9,000, whereas an equivalent truck might cost $15,000 or $20,000. It could cost as much as double. That's gonna be something you have to factor in. It's also gonna be something you have to factor in when you're working to convert and grow your, your, your business, your client base. Uh, I can say that we would have a lot of pushback from our clients who maybe leave their dumpsters in the garage, uh, or maybe their dumpsters are in a place that you can't get to. How do, you, how do you handle that? It's different in at literally every single household. And so there are some pitfalls. But what I'm also learning is using a car is far more expensive. You don't have to worry about where you're gonna dispose of the waste. If you're disposing, disposing of the waste on the job site at a client's home, then you do not have to deal with one of the most common questions we get in this business, which is what do you do with the waste? Where does it go? Do you put it in a dumpster? Uh, many people starting this business don't have a facility. They're literally coming to their home. A lot of our technicians, if not all of our technicians, drive vehicles home to their, to their, uh, to their place of residence. Uh, and so with a, with a car, you do not have to deal with figuring out what you're gonna do with the waste. We have different strategies in different markets. Some markets, we have to take the waste to the dump site, to the actual landfill. In other places, we have 
outdoor storage facility that we pay a monthly rent for, and then we pay for the dumpster to go on that outdoor storage facility, that can get pretty expensive. When you're not hauling the waste away, it really does simplify your business. And one of the things I love about this business is its simplicity. So there are some benefits to using a car. Now that said, we have stuck with using a truck. We intend to continue to build our business in what we would call a full service mindset where we are hauling the waste away uh, and we are gonna use trucks to do this. So what are the best trucks to use? You wanna find the most fuel efficient truck you can possibly find. In our experience, any car that we would look at can't carry the weight of a couple of hundred pounds of dog waste, sometimes coming out of a first time scoop but almost always coming out of a daily route, you know, where our technicians are scooping between 20 and 35 stops a day, depending on the market that they're in. And that is just automatically going to come with usually hundreds of pounds of waste just in a day's work, just in a normal day's work. And so we're always hauling that waste away, which means we need a truck but it means we also do not need, there's no scenario where we have ever needed a half ton truck. We have always only needed a compact truck and really we've always only needed the most compact truck we can possibly find. We just need a bed that can carry three to 600 pounds of dog waste. And so that's usually gonna be the smallest, most fuel efficient, least expensive truck you can possibly find. What trucks are those? Well, historically, we tinkered with Nissan Frontiers because they didn't have the high price tag that a Toyota Tacoma did, but they still had that long-term reliability. Nissans are notorious for making it more than 200, 250,000 miles. Uh, Chevy S10s do not have that same reputation. I've owned both. I've started mowing yards in a Chevy S10. We started scooping poop in a Nissan Frontier. Uh, I've owned multiple of both. And let me tell you, a Chevy S10, or its predecessor, a Chevrolet Colorado, does not get nearly the lifespan as a Nissan Frontier or a Toyota Tacoma. And so historically, we purchased, started with purchasing Nissan Frontiers because they were a little cheaper than the Toyota Tacomas. But after buying five or 10 of them over, over the years, we actually realized that Toyota Tacomas, though they're a few thousand dollars more expensive at any given time, whether you're buying a used one or a new one, they're a couple thousand dollars more expensive but you get far more life out of them with far less maintenance issues. And at the end of their life, when you go to resell the vehicle, a Toyota Tacoma is always going to have held its value longer than a Nissan Frontier. And so for us, we started really working towards, for, the, for a long period of time, operating the Toyota Tacomas for these reasons. They were a little more expensive up front, but they lasted longer, their maintenance cost over time was less, and then when you went to sell the vehicle, they held their value so much more. So we actually got a lot more bang for our buck out of a Toyota Tacoma. Now we've got franchisees that have bought uh, Ford Rangers, we've got franchisees that have bought Chevrolet Colorados, and that's just because that was what was available to them in their local market, that was their preference, and I think those trucks are great trucks to be pet waste removal trucks. The ones you want to generally steer clear of are the full-size trucks, a half ton or a three-quarter ton. They get less gas mileage, they're so big and bulky, they're unnecessarily big and bulky, so they're just less efficient. Of course, if that's your preference and you like a big truck, I historically personally preferred a little bit of a larger truck. So if you're out there doing the work yourself and you prefer a bigger truck, by all means, half ton truck. I do find it really inefficient and really odd if I was to see an F-250 or a three quarter ton or a one ton truck scooping poop. That's a bit overkill. Uh, but half ton trucks, you're, gonna, you're getting into, um, a, a more size than you need. Uh, your traditional mid-size or compact V8 trucks are generally gonna be your best. So now let me go to my absolute favorite, which has only been around a little while, and that is the Ford Maverick. I think they started making Ford Mavericks in 2022. We're recording this in 2024, so it's been two years. We've had about a dozen of these Ford Mavericks within our Scoop Soldier system, and over two years, they have proven to be reliable, they get double the gas mileage of any of the other trucks I've been talking about. Not so much the cars, I've moved on from the cars, but they, the Ford Maverick gets double the gas mileage. It gets 37 to 42 miles to the gallon, whereas any other truck that we've mentioned, Ford Ranger, 
uh, Chevrolet Colorado, Toyota Tacoma, Nissan Frontiers, these vehicles get at best 20 miles to the gallon and that's if you're lucky, that's on a good day. They usually will get, uh, with, with people really running them and technicians running them, they're going to usually get more like 17 miles to the gallon running through cities as opposed to highway mileage. They're going to get 15, 16, 17 miles to the gallon. A Ford Maverick gets double that. And in this industry, when somewhere between three and a half and five percent of your entire revenues, three and a half to five percent of every dollar you produce is going to go towards your fuel, you really, really, really want to find the most fuel efficient vehicle, especially if it's still going to be a truck, it's going to get double the gas mileage, that's going to save you a percent to two percent, maybe more depending on how spread out your service routes are, you're going to save one to two percent of your total revenue in fuel by going with a Ford Maverick hybrid. Let me also clarify, Ford Mavericks are made with traditional engines. I would not bother with those. I would specifically look for Ford Mavericks that have the hybrid engine that's getting around 40 miles to the gallon. That can be a game changer, especially as your business scales. So speaking to the reliability of the Ford Maverick, uh, when they break down, we've only had them for two years now, and so none of our Ford Mavericks are out of warranty yet. And so there have been, we've had one in Seattle in particular that's been in and out of the shop a little more than I'd like. It's always warranty work. It does usually have to do with the battery. And so this is still somewhat new technology, hybrid engines uh, that, that are produced by Ford in a Ford, a small Ford truck. These are still somewhat new. And so uh, the issues we have had have been warrantied, but they have been usually revolving around that battery. That said, out of a dozen or more trucks, these have proven to be reliable enough that I can endorse them. And if I could wave my magic wand, I would replace the entire Scoop Soldiers fleet with Ford Mavericks because it would cut our fuel efficiency in, it would cut the cost of our fuel in half. It would double our fuel efficiency. We're still in the early stages of this at Scoop Soldiers. As I mentioned, we've got around a dozen or so Ford Mavericks in our entire fleet, which is not even 10% of our fleet. But over the next three, four, five, six years, I can foresee that the majority of all the vehicles purchased by our franchisees and by us at, at service company are going to be Ford Mavericks because they are the best of both worlds. They get as good a gas mileage as almost any car you're going to drive, but they also allow you to do full service where you can haul the waste off, which is going to give you a lot less pushback when people are signing up for your service. Usually the first in this industry, they've just discovered this industry, the pet waste service. They've just discovered that they can have somebody come into their backyard uh, and, and do this for them and provide this convenience for them. But one of the pushbacks they're going to automatically have is like, well, why don't you haul it off for me? And so you want to alleviate those initial concerns and having a vehicle is going to do that if or having a truck, excuse me, is going to do that versus having a car. By the way, one more note on the Ford Maverick. It is actually less expensive. It's the best of both worlds. It gets double the gas mileage, but an MSRP on a Ford Maverick is usually between three and $7,000 less on average than a Toyota Tacoma or even a Ford Ranger or any of these other mid-sized trucks. The Ford Maverick's a little smaller, way more fuel efficient, and has a way lower MSRP which is gonna benefit you in the long run as well, especially in a marketplace where trucks have gone up by roughly 40%. The MSRP on a new truck has gone up by about 40% in the last five or six years. And so Ford Mavericks are a lifesaver for this business. So those are my thoughts on whether or not you should use a car, a truck, and what are the best, most efficient options to use. Be sure to like and follow for more content like this.